Halloween H2O, 1998. Today we're talking about the death, the Sarah Wainthrop kill. Sarah. Um, I, I love Sarah. I love Sarah so, so much. Um, Halloween H2O is a film that I actually love. Uh, I, I think it's fantastic. I think it's great. It is um, loosely based on a an original treatment uh, from Kevin Williamson. Kevin's original um, script was like Halloween 7, um, The Revenge of Laurie Strode, which is a an incredible name. And of course, that still followed the Thorn trilogy continuity, which Halloween H2O completely gets rid of. Um, man, the Halloween timeline is... is X-Men and Terminator uh, levels of impossible to decipher and interpret, but that's fine. Because uh, Halloween H2O is great. Uh, it came out just like Urban Legend did, just like the faculty did, in the most intensified part of the wave of the postmodern teen slasher film, which the, 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 those are the movies I'm completely obsessed with. And uh, it's really cool because, of course... Um, Within the postmodern uh, slasher film, like something like God is a non-issue concept. Spiritual concepts are all just non-issues. Doesn't mean that the films um, are actively opposed to God. It simply means that in a postmodern universe, God is not in the equation. It's just a non-issue, um, which is fun. Putting Michael Myers into that uh, kind of landscape of thought landscape of style i should say because postmodern um pop films are more about behavior and attitude uh more so than a direct philosophy um so when you put michael myers into this situation you have to strip him of his divinity but since it's postmodernism and it's deconstruction that divinity has to go somewhere so where does it go? You, you, you strip Michael Myers of his Lovecraftian sensibilities, of his uh, godlike Luciferian fucking framework. Where does it go? It goes to Laurie Strode. Michael Myers' uh, divinity is removed from him, and Laurie is deified in the film. Um, directed by Steve Miner. Uh, who directed Friday the 13th Part 2, Part 3, and cl and he also directed quite a few episodes of Dawson's Creek, um, probably the Kevin Williamson project uh, that I love to death. And um, so Steve Miner is well acquainted with the postmodern sensibilities, and especially with the, the school of thought that was Williamson-esque. Um, to the point where you see Michael's eyes so clearly just like you saw Jason's. But here, it's different. Here you see his eyes because he's humanized. They ghost-faced him. They ghost-faced Michael in this movie. He's a fucking, like, he's a pretty bad killer. He's pretty bad at his, uh, at his job. And I think that's wonderful because you remove Michael's divinity and you deify Laurie in turn. That's deconstructionist. That's postmodern. That battles the social stratification inherent in legacy horror pictures like Halloween. I think Halloween H2O is wonderful. Sarah has the best death in the whole movie. One of my favorite deaths of all time. I wish I could tell you I loved the character so much, which, by the way, I do love the character a lot. It's just coming from a, uh, <laughs> um, a fucking loserish man part of me that's like, D do I love the character, or do I just have a huge crush on Jodie Lynn O'Keefe who plays the character? I'm not sure. I'm not sure if those have to be mutually exclusive. I'm not sure if. If, if that um, alters anything, necessarily, Jodie Lynn O'Keefe is one of my ultimate 90s dream girls, and of course, I love to watch her do anything, but especially, like, be brutalized by Michael Myers? I don't know. I don't know what it's saying. But, um, Jodie Lynn O'Keefe is as hot as it gets, really. So... I don't know if I like Sarah too much as a character. Uh, she's an archetype. Now, most of these characters in this film don't have a whole lot of interiority, part for the course for a Halloween film. I wish they had a little bit more interiority. I think Kevin Williamson, if we had had him helm the entire script, would have provided these characters with, with more interiority. But, I mean, Sarah's archetype is... Um, is fully visible, at least. I mean, she is, like, the kind of rebellious... Um, uh, like more erotic friend 
um, who just wants to have like like a like a good time and a lot of sex with her boyfriend. I think is basically her motivation. But uh, since she's played by Jodie Lynn O'Keefe, and Jodie Lynn O'Keefe has an inherent like ability and just uh, inherent sexiness, I'm totally in love with the Sarah character. But um, you're gonna hear excerpts from a critique, an analysis that Jacob and I did um, on this channel about the film Halloween H2O, and specifically I'm going to clip it so you hear the parts where we talk about Sarah's death, because like I'm fumbling around with the words when really, at the end of the day, it's quite simple what I like most about Sarah's death. Uh, the fact that it's Jodie Lynn O'Keefe and I'm in love with her definitely helps, but the word is scary. It's scary, and it's brutal, and it's hurtful. And it, it really shocked me when I first watched it. I first watched it when I was like nine or ten. And every time I watched the film, her death, there's such a visceral, shocking um, display of like grotesquerie involved with her death that uh, like I'm always speechless. I'm always stunned by it. Um, she tries to go up that dumbwaiter, that elevator shoot. It's actually called a dumbwaiter. Um, in, in the kitchen, and when she tries to get out of that dumb waiter, oh my god! And the and it, and it nearly clips off her and like the, her calf, her entire leg, and she's crawling around the floor. Oh, and Michael puts her out like a wounded animal. Oh my god, it's so harsh. And you see her later on in morbid mock tableau with like hanging from a light fixture with light like emanating through her rib cage. It's just what. What? Why was Sarah punished so heavily? That is so mean. That is so weird. So shocking. But in the analysis, you'll hear me like stumble around the words. And at the end of the day, what that death is to me is the most visceral death of the 90s postmodern era. It's the most visceral one. It's the most shocking on a visual level, perhaps the most like, um, what, like, like traditionally uh, horrific death in these postmodern horror movies because it's just so cruel and unescapable, um, unchangeable. It, it's where Michael kind of feels like a deified force for, even if it's just for a minute. And that's scary. Sarah Wayne Throp is a mind-blowing character um, to me because I'm like outrageously attracted to her. Um, her death stuns me stuns me. My, Halloween H2O to me just feels like such a classic film. It, it, it has all of those qualities inherent in timelessness in my head. Like I, I love the costume design, the the private school outfits that they wear, uh, the color texturing, the color grading, the color scheme, um, all of those colors of fall, of Halloween. It definitely elevates uh, the archetypes in this film, especially the, the, the four kids um, who seem to be near the center of the drama and the horror. Uh, it elevates them into um, kind of areas that, uh, that I can't help but think of them, no matter if they do lack interiority, I think of them as timeless and tragic in the end. And Sarah, I love Sarah. She's got a really cool attitude. Um, you know, she's a cool rebel friend, um, and I'm really down with her. I love her attitude, I love her behavior, and the way that she is brutalized and mutilated just shocks me. Because the movie does run a chance of being a little too sanitized, but there's nothing safe about Sarah's death. It's very confrontational, in only a way that Michael Myers can be. I love Halloween H2O. It's my second favorite Halloween film. My favorite Halloween film is Halloween 4, The Return of Michael Myers. I kind of just think that's a beautiful film in every every regard. It's a beautiful film. Um, Halloween H2O is right next to it. I, I can't imagine the postmodern era without it, even though it doesn't really seem to say a whole lot. Um, there's still something that's in incredibly distilled within it. That blows my mind every time that I watch it. Um, it's an interesting distillation of what the postmodern attitude of the time, the ethos, the, the, the stylish teen self-referential ethos uh, was all about. And I think it's best encapsulated in Sarah. 
And by proxy of Sarah, it's in her death. Uh, her death speaks volumes. Um, let's talk about these these four kids because um, <laughs> uh, I, I do like them. I do like our four new kids. In fact, I would I would um, if possible, I would simp for uh, Jodie Lynn O'Keefe like all day <laughs> if I can. Uh, she played Sarah in the movie. She's she's incredible. She's great. And um, if you grew up in the '90s, early 2000s, you you kind of know her as the mega bitch in every single movie. Like like she's all that and certain television shows and stuff. Like and that. she gets the roughest. I That's think. my. She's my favorite. Definitely. Oh, it is. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And uh, we'll cover her in probably like ten minutes. But I uh, just want to say she's, oh my God, I think she, she's outrageously attractive and uh, just, just a good character. But attraction shouldn't end there. We have Josh Hartnett with the most perfect late yeah. 90s hair I've ever seen. It's still, he d- it's still it's faculty. The same, it's the same goddamn hair from faculty. And I still don't know why he <laughs> looks like kind of cool in it. Yeah. yeah, H2O isn't my favorite Halloween, but it's the one I have the most fondness for and the most fun watching. Um, I can see that. But <laughs> to get to to get to where I really want to go, um, the part that actually freaked me out as a kid. So Jody Lynn O'Keefe, my, my 90s dream girl, um, she's next on the list. She finds, and it's also one of my favorite slasher movies, movie deaths up there with Parker and Damon and Carter from Final Destination. And... Um, what uh scream to like randy's like um it's up there and uh she finds her boyfriend hold on let me take a sip of this drink <laughs> extremely dry throat this is what people like yeah to same do, I think. oh god but um finds her boyfriend with his throat cut in the elevator which like <laughs> already michael's just recycling how he kills people but <laughs> that's like the second or third slit throat we've got but um okay so jody leno keeps death sarah's death it's fucked me up for so long it, it is so she brutal, sees michael actually, yeah. coming and she hides in the elevator going up and michael does get her like in the side a little bit with his huge kitchen knife and she starts going up and i love that they set up this elevator as this thing like earlier with michelle williams doing dish work or something for for the school i have no idea what she was doing but i think she was doing some some job thing yeah you know she was she was yeah and uh, she goes up to the top and she starts crawling out of the uh the elevator and like (laughs) her dead boyfriend's corpse is like her her uh, her pant leg is snagging on his body and she's having just a little bit of difficulty getting out of it. So Michael cuts the rope for this elevator thing, which is something you put like dirty dishes in to bring it back down in case anyone's yeah. having trouble remembering this, even though I'm it's, probably it's showing an image. It's been in so many horror movies. So. Yeah, but it's never been done to this visceral effect and what I'm talking about right now when the elevator falls back down and fucking destroys Ashes. demolishes her her leg like like her her ankle really um like the middle whatever dude the leg the leg help me out anatomy majors i'm i'm, I'm being i'm too grossed out right now it's the leg it just fucking almost snaps directly off you see her crawling on the floor and they show like her completely mangled leg and mangled is probably an understatement as well. I mean, it's almost off. It's hanging on by like a bare piece of flesh (laughs) and it's fucking, I remember being a lot. I mean, this thing hasn't dissipated at all, but watching it when I was younger, it's just being like, that's such a visceral fucking horror moment for me. (laughs) And like, it's one of those things that like psychosomatically, I don't, I don't know psychologically I, I always reach down at my leg or something when I when I see that scene because it makes you like you feel a phantom pain from that <laughs> like you just feel it it's, it's just a really great, great moment and she's crawling and Michael just took the fucking stairs I guess <laughs> and he's towering it's one of the only times Michael feels like a deified thing maybe too because <laughs> um, yeah. I mean she, she gets this very harsh I mean don't necessarily understand the geography of where they are like we didn't know there was just an available staircase right there i don't know but he's right there again and she's crawling and begging for her life um williamson-esque style and michael like steps holds her down pins her down with his like leg like she's a 
like a dying animal and just just hacks her to death with a knife it's really i think um it's the most brutal fucking death of the movie sarah got it the worst by far like it's not even a contest of who got the worst death it's sarah <laughs> Um, the other ones are either off screen or they're kind of uncharacteristically bloodless or with mm -hmm. as little blood as possible because um, they're normally kind of quick in this movie. What did you think of her death? I, I'm pretty much the same. I, I, I don't know. I, most of the deaths in this movie didn't get me. I, I was almost worried it was going to be a little too sanitized. Uh, that scene happened, the shot of her leg when she's crawling yeah. on the floor. Just I was like, oh, God that's that's oh. rough that's rough um i i can't that's, say i was a, as attached to her as you were um i actually it's think it's just most me of being kids... a gross man i just thought she was really <laughs> hot <laughs> I, I, um, I, okay i know i what like you that mean. i know what you i mean. like that he he has his his divinity if you want like stripped away from him and it's almost yeah. given to Lori. like Lori. Lori to me almost becomes deified in this movie yeah a little bit it's like inversed in a, in a really cool postmodern way that like michael should fear laurie this is obviously laurie's reckoning it's, well, it's michael's reckoning and it's laurie's revenge I, I do feel that especially when she tells the kids to go and she grabs a fucking axe and she just stands there and screams michael's name <laughs> like yeah. come get some <laughs> like i'm in the parking lot if you want to get your ass kicked <laughs> like, this is where for me the the movie kind of <laughs> shifts from being trying to be like legitimately sympathetic to like what Laura is going through to becoming like borderline cartoonish but in a way i find completely appealing yes i find um, it appealing I mean, and endearing actually i yeah like i don't love it like i said I, um i don't love it but like that's where i'm like all right at least you're leaning into it at least you're you're really just owning it and leaning into it um these movies are all about like empowering your, your final girl. And she almost yeah. has like superhuman abilities at the end to where they can like the tropes bend and break at their own, at their whims, yeah. at their will. They can like, they can rearrange a fucking horror movie in the last 10 minutes. For me, that's kind of why I, I don't entirely take seriously or sympathize with the, the, the way it tries to approach um, her PTSD just because it goes to that place of, cartooniness but like, i like, also like if respect you do it. like you yeah i don't think you you can respect it but since i do consider this a postmodern horror movie and like i don't think yeah it's kind of just the <laughs> nature of it like yeah, i don't know like the, it's actually more sympathetic to view it as the trope dealing with PTSD of like the exactly, final girl's been exactly. so abused over and over again, not necessarily like a real life woman, but the trope itself has been so abused and misused and yes, yes. mistreated. And this is like the final girl <laughs> be, like being given an ax and she gets the fucking, I don't want to, I mean, it doesn't matter. We're talking about the whole ending. Like, she gets to chop off the fucking head. No mercy, motherfucker. Yeah. Like, this is the final girl's uh, day, really. Sure, I feel like. I almost Maybe feel like uh, this movie kind of legitimized also that the Williamson uh, slasher movie in the eyes of a lot of people. Oh, um, like where people started to realize it was a trend? Yeah. Yeah, I, I can see that. Legitimized how how deep it already is in horror culture that Michael is doing that. Yeah, it makes I can see that because again, like like I said at the beginning, I got I got whiplash watching this, and it, it makes sense because I when I watched it, it wasn't just that it was '90s aesthetics, although that was a big part of it. It was just like seeing '90s aesthetics compared to you know '70s aesthetics. It, it was night and day, but difference yeah. it, it was like a whole different world whereas this one you know you open with mr sandman and then every other scene you get this orchestral 90s hollywood score like which isn't yeah. necessarily good or bad i'm not saying like that makes or breaks a movie i'm saying like it's just the aesthetic difference is obvious it's like this is a completely different era for horror and i think that makes that clear so i i guess as far as like its place in horror i don't think it marked any changes i don't think it necessarily revealed anything but if you watch it you know it's yeah. emblematic of the period that birthed it it's 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 as 90s as it gets it's it, you yeah it's it. weird it didn't mark any changes or it wasn't like a huge um significant moment in this time period but i can't imagine this set of films which we've said is like actually rather limited like there's like only a real few of them 
I couldn't uh, imagine this era without Halloween H2O. I think it's kind of definitive of the era, even like, even though it didn't do a whole lot, because like yeah. you said, it is incredibly 90s and not in a way that the faculty is. It's not like we're pummeled with the offspring. It is just the aesthetic of 90s. Yeah, the, visual, the way, visual language of 90s, really. Yeah, the way a shot is framed, the way they color a shot, the way they edit a shot, it's overwhelmingly 90s god like the the opening credits are take place over your you know detective you know pin board of lines yeah. linking a picture of michael to a picture of laurie strode <laughs> on the wall like that like that scene from always sunny it's just it's as 90s yeah. as it gets and to some people as 90s as it gets is uh, a turnoff for me oh my god give it to me i, I open up <laughs> and I feed me i'm a baby bird bro 